Welcome back to the truck. I really need to empty this out because, well, I need to empty it out. And also, I actually need to use it, specifically the lift gate, to get the fancy new toy, the ES9000, into the building uh, through the shipping dock here. Now, that ES9000, I actually took my trailer down to Tennessee kind of on a whim. I wasn't really planning on bringing anything back except for the little things, the 3174s, the terminals, books, whatever. Uh, but I took my flatbed trailer because, well, it's easy to do. And uh, I ended up taking both the processor cabinet and the whole Ramac 2, the DASD cabinet. Uh, I took the drives, of course. They lived inside the van to give them a nice, quiet, easy ride. But uh, I do need to uh, I do need to get both of the big cabinets off of the trailer. They're all cocooned now. Um, but yeah, you know the weather's going to turn bad. It's going to rain eventually. In fact, I think it might even rain Wednesday. So I really need to get them off the trailer. Now they are cocooned, uh, shrink, shrink wrap and also pallet bags. Pallet bags are great. Uh, you can get them through Uline and other shipping supply places. Essentially it's a gigantic, very thick plastic bag and they're used to cover pallets of stuff. Typically 40 by 48 pallets. And uh, they're absolutely wonderful, and they're very thick, very sturdy, wonderful for covering things that you put on a trailer uh, to keep them waterproof, watertight. And uh, that cocoon will actually last a nice long time. And as long as you keep it all taped up, shrunk wrap and all that, and of course strapped down and blocked in, you can put something on a, a flatbed trailer and you can go through a, not a hurricane, but... Uh, a nice, nice rainstorm, you know, one of those really pounding rainstorms, and you won't get a drop inside. Anyway, enough of that. I do need to uh, get those things off the trailer because I don't want them sitting on my trailer forever. They're supposed to go in the building, aren't they? So let's take a look at this thing. I wasn't planning on doing this. This is that... Uh, CDC slash Hitachi dual tape drive system uh, that I kind of pointed to before. And uh, we're going to do this a little, in this is going to be a little more of an interesting thing here in that I've not actually looked inside of this. I purchased this so oh, five or six years ago. It's been in storage. Still has the shrink wrap on it. I took the straps off. But, um, I have not seen inside. So as far as I know, there could be uh, a bunch of bricks. There could it could be loaded with circuit boards. It could have a preserved head in a jar. I don't know. But let's take a look at this. Oh, it is hot in here too. I also want to get this stuff out of the truck because it's going to start cooking in here. So break the shrink wrap here. So you get to see my uh, reflection in the glass. Okay, well, nine track tape drive. There we go. Looks vacuum column. I know very, very little about these. Uh, they appear to be Hitachis. They are tagged as CDCs. Um, 698s. Uh, six, uh, what was it? Six ninety seven was the uh, the kind of famous CDC one. CDC had a bunch of tape drives. They were good at tape drives. Uh, but eventually, this is towards the end of of CDC's uh, life, and they just started badge engineering a lot of stuff. But you can see a little bit of a front panel here with some controls, and I do like the uh, CE call. It's a little workman lights up. This is apparently the control panel, or the control unit. The control panel for the control unit. And, well, <laughs> enable and disable. You don't get a whole lot of choices. But now for the interesting thing. Let's look inside. 
like I said, I don't know what's in this. I have never looked inside. Cyber Magnetic Tape S Subsystem, the CMTS. It's a tape drive. So, we'll assume that these are the things to, uh, to do here. Oh, yep. All right, here goes. Like I said, I have not looked inside. Uh-oh. We have... It's very interesting. They uh, There's a ground strap, and uh, it's actually a plug-type ground strap. I didn't think they actually allowed that. <laughs> so let's get this off. Pardon the shaky camera work. You know, my crew's out to lunch, right? I could see. Okay, well, you know, it's it's starting to look Japanese, isn't it? Get this other piece off. And looks very much the same. Let's take a quick look. Now we've got some power supplies, clearly. And uh, a back plane. I wonder how you're supposed to get into that. A big box, which another uh, openable thing here. There we go. Oh, mechanical bits. All right, well, we can assume, uh, well, maybe a vacuum pump. Pneumatic supply assembly. Sanyo Denke. This thing is dense. Oh, I should say this thing is heavy. It is immensely heavy. Foam's still pretty good, although I don't trust it. The other side looks kind of the same. I wonder if there's a way to get... Look at the cards. This probably opens up, but I have no idea how. I think I see how, maybe. There we go. All right. There we go. It's looking like a proper tape drive. Not too bad a shape. Not too bad a shape at all. But it was in a nice, uh, nice storage area. More power supply, and of course, big tubes. You gotta have big tubes. And unlike so many drives, these hoses seem pretty nice. But then again, this is, uh, this is not terribly old. This is probably 88, maybe? I wonder if we could find a date code at some point. Now, I don't know if we could get a card on. I'm going to ground thyself here. There we go. Ooh, nice. Yep, Hitachi. Because I'm holding this upside down. Very, very Japanese looking. Very nice quality. They made good stuff. You know, we really didn't see too much of their big computer stuff here uh, for various reasons. Uh, of course, the supercomputers were for many, many years off limits due to dumping, anti-dumping laws, I guess they were. We'll deal with that in a bit. All the bundled wires. Yeah, pretty nicely done, I gotta say. Those are uh, probably pressure switches there. Hopefully they'll still be good. That's what fails on a lot of these. The little chassis probably has all the read and write amps and such like that. Let's go back again here. Let's grab my screwdriver. And uh, I don't expect the control unit to have much, being so late in the game. Let's 
that, oh, huh. I should, uh, maybe not, so it speaks a look at the size of that back plane. And there's a, a thing on the side here. And, uh, yeah, bus and tag. Actually, uh, actually, officially, it's called uh, the Federal Channel Standard or something along those lines. It's essentially bus and tag. And you may be thinking, why CDC bus and tag? That makes no sense. Well, the government standardized things for mainframes and um, came up with this federal standard. Well, they, they just made it bus and tag, which was going to be the federal standard. And that sort of made sense because a vast majority of um, uh, government mainframes, U.S. government mainframes, uh, are and there were and still very much are uh, IBM based. And CDC actually did make a big box called a 19404, which converts Cyber 170 channel into bus and tag. It's a gigantic box. Uh, I've got a couple of them here. Uh, about five feet tall, three feet wide, two feet deep, and it's full of air. Um, there's, there's just a few cards in it that don't do the channel conversion, and that's it. So... I wonder how you get to the front of this. Like I said, I've not seen the insides of this before. A little finger hole there. And it sort of wants to open. Alright, I'm not entirely certain how this opens. It sort of wants to. Feeling around in the bottom here. Pardon the messy truck. And I do not know how to open it. It is so close. Pardon me. Let's see if we can see anything down there. I definitely feel the latch. There we go. Alright, well, it looks like, uh, yeah, a bunch of cards behind this panel. Not sure how to get that open. Ah, I see. A couple of screws here. And uh, how's the video going? Oh, the video's going pretty long. I'm going to have to cut this off pretty soon. But yeah, oh, lamp test. We got lamp test. Uh, and the power supplies. So pretty neat, actually. All right, well, uh, I better cut this short. Put this thing back together and get it off the truck so I can get the ES9000 in the truck and then get that out of the truck. And then I can make a video of that because I know you guys are uh, interested in seeing that. Yeah, thanks to all that shared that video. It's, it's floating around. Uh, yeah, and if you like this video, yeah, please share this too. Um, you like it, and maybe even subscribe. Maybe even watch the past videos. And uh, leave a comment too. I do try and get to all the comments. Um, yeah. All right then. Talk to you later.